What's going on parts? Welcome to another Sea of Thieves video. Today we're going to do a complete walkthrough of the Heart of Fire tale, where you can unlock this fantastic Ashen Curse in the Smokin' Ashen Ship Hall. To complete all the accommodations, it's going to take you roughly two to three hours, so let's get started. First thing you want to do is sail over to Morrow's Peak Outpost and head into the tavern. To the right of Tulua is the journal. Read it and get things started. As the story unfolds, you'll learn that Stitcher Jim has deceived everyone and is behind the release of Flameheart, and is now about to summon an Ashen Lord using the souls of Pendragon's crew. Gracie informs you that Stitcher Jim was last seen on Liar's Backbone hiding in his secret cave. Sail over to Liar's Backbone and search the north side of the island for a small alcove with a lever. This is the entrance to Stitcher Jim's secret chamber. Once you're inside, head to the left of the entrance and you will find the first of five journals needed to unlock the Ashen Curse. Throughout the chamber you'll notice symbols on the walls. These are clues to solving the locked puzzle. By turning the pillars to say Captain Flameheart and pulling on the lever will open the puzzle. Be sure to grab Jim's notes and the key from the alcove. The notes tell us that he's currently on Devil's Thirst, preparing to summon the first Ashen Lord. So let's head over there now. When you arrive, head to the north side of the island. Grab the key and swim down to the underwater tomb. While swimming, if you get turned around or lost, just look for the orange glowy crystals. They always point in the direction you should go. Eventually, you will reach a large chamber with three doors. At first, it's not clear how to open the doors. If you look up, you will notice large skulls with symbols that match each door. To open the door, throw a firebomb at the corresponding skull. The left choice takes you on the path of the Eternal King. The first trap consists of some horizontal flaming jets. These will enable and disable every few seconds, so just time your run through. If you do get lit on fire, a bucket of water or some food will fix you right up. Using the pulley at the end of the hall will raise the door to the next room, where you will have to fight five waves of ashen skeletons. Using sword lunges will take them out very quickly. The next room contains vertical flaming jets and a spinning capstan of fire. The fire can be avoided by just watching your timing between the jets. The next portion is a hallway of lava, where you just jump across stones. When you approach the third stone on the left, there is a pile of skulls, and that's where you can find the second journal. After finding the journal, you will dive into some water and be presented with two spike traps. Each will pulse twice, then slow, giving you the opportunity to pass by unharmed. When you emerge from the water, you'll have to fight five more waves of ashen skeletons before moving on. Pretty easy peasy. The final room is the most difficult so far. You will have to deal with multiple flaming jets and swinging spikes. Time your jump to avoid the spikes, you don't have to worry too much about the fire. Watch for the swinging spike log, as it can be difficult to get the timing correct. Finally, you will reach another corridor with a long spike pit in the center. You will need to hop back and forth between the edges to avoid being burned while not falling into the spike pit below. After completing the spike hallway, you'll have to use a pulley to raise a set of rocks out of the lava. Use these stones to cross the lava pool, but be quick as they immediately begin to sink. Cross the walkway, climb the ladder, and you're finished with the Eternal King route. Let's go back and complete the remaining two paths before continuing the story. And we're back, thanks to the magic of editing. This time we're going to choose the green path, the Forsaken Flame. But before you enter the door, be sure to grab that third journal. It's just before the entrance to the right hand side. Upon starting this path, you'll be presented with a Jet of Flame. Just time your run between the bursts to avoid being burned. Once complete, head to the left, jump across some stones while avoiding the lava pool, and throw a firebomb at the skull. This will open the locked passageway and also trigger an additional swing trap. 
you have to be quick about this, as the passage will not remain open indefinitely. In the next room, you have to face another five waves of skeletons. I didn't mention this in the last skeleton fight, but there are also traps that can be triggered to help you defeat the waves. Just throw firebombs into large skulls to trigger them. Personally, I find that they cause more trouble than benefit. Once you've defeated the skeletons and moved on to the next room, be sure to grab the fourth journal. You can find it on the left side of the room next to a pile of skulls. In your next challenge, you'll have to deal with the Wheel of Flames trap. Again, just time your movements to avoid being burned. Immediately after the flames, you will jump between platforms while avoiding spike traps, so be careful. The next obstacle will require you to use a pulley and lower a mast that you must run across. The mast will slowly reset, so be quick about it. In the next room, you'll need to use a pulley system, which will move a cage, igniting one of the two skulls in the room. When complete, inspect the cage at the end of the hall and light the torch. Nearby there is another pulley which will raise the cage to the ceiling, igniting the second skull and opening the door. The final room presents you with a capstan you need to raise while being burned by flaming jets. Once raised, a door behind you will open that contains a pull lever. Once you activate the lever, the door will open, but it will also trigger swinging blades. Take care with your jumps and timing between the blades. Congratulations, you've now completed the second challenge, the Forsaken Flame. Now, onto the final red door, leading to the Path of the Burning Heart. This first trap has two spinning blades that move back and forth. To open the door, you must throw fireballs at the two skulls in the room. The first skull is to the left of the gate, the second can be found when looking back the way you came. The next obstacle is rotating jets of fire, which you can quickly sprint through, followed by a set of spinning blades. These blades cannot be jumped over. Instead, search the room for the four levers which will disable the traps. The next challenge contains a long section of rotating fire jets and spike pits. In the next section, you're going to have to cross a big pool of lava. You can sprint jump across or use your sword lunge. Next, you'll have to once again fight five waves of skeletons. Combat is literally the easiest part of these tall tales. In the next room, be sure you raise the pulley to your left. It will open the far door for a limited period of time. You should probably notice the pressure plates on the ground. If you touch any of them, you will set off all the fire traps in the room. The final corridor is full of horizontal wall spikes. You will need to time your run to make it to the small alcoves on the right hand side. Also, the fifth and final journal can be found in the second alcove. Congratulations, you have now completed the Path of the Burning Heart. Now, on to the completion of this tale. Once you open the door, you will emerge into a large room where the other two paths exit. Work your way down the lava pool and across the stones. Along the way you will see and hear Stitcher Jim in great distress and learn that Flameheart has imbued him with the power of an Ashen Lord. I have no idea what this means, but I suspect it's not a good thing. When you reach the other side of the lava pool, grab the chest of rage and continue along the hallway. We aren't out of this yet. After passing through the locked door, you will be presented with even more fire jets. Again, just time your movements and avoid being burned. The next room will require you to leap from platform to platform while avoiding swinging skeletons and fire jets. If you fall, you will need to backtrack and start those hazards again. Once you complete the swing traps, the next room will have you fighting against another five waves of skeletons. You should be able to quickly defeat them. 
The final room requires you to navigate a balance beam while avoiding several swinging spike traps and horizontal flame jets. After all the hazards, you will swim through some additional corridors, eventually leading back to the surface where Pendragon will be anxiously awaiting your arrival. He asks for the chest and quickly performs a ceremony to release the spirits of the Black Witch crew. I'm going to attempt to reverse the ritual. I can only hope there's something of my friends left to save. Congratulations, you have now successfully completed the Heart of Fire Tall Tale and unlocked all the accommodations. Enjoy your new Ashen Curse and Ashen Ship Hall. If you guys like this walkthrough, do me a favor, leave a comment below. I'd like to get your feedback. Also, if you like my content, please click that big red subscribe button and notification bell. Until next time, I'll see you on the seas.